Hi there everyone, it's Misty here. Welcome back to the scrapbookpal.com YouTube channel for another project with me today. So I am making a Mother's Day project and I'm gonna be doing a lot of die cutting and zero stamping. I love doing these cards from time to time because sometimes you just find the most beautiful dies and you really want them to shine. So I have dies from Sizzix, I have a die from Honeybee Stamps, and I have this gift card die from Pink Fresh Studio. All of the supplies minus the card stock will be linked in the description box down below. Initially, I was gonna go for kind of a bright and pastel color palette, but later on, I decided to go just with pastel, so I won't be using that dark pink. For the embroidery hoop and the frame, I'm using a piece of craft cardstock and a piece of ivory cardstock. For this particular die, when you use the circle that does the stitching for you, you have to also use the hoop so it'll cut it out. Um, and here I just have some random embroidery floss from my stash. So um, apologies to those of you who embroider all the time because I haven't done it in like 25 years. <laughs> so this is the gift card um, die from Pink Fresh Studio and I love this. This makes it so easy, it cuts it down to um, one uh, layer that will fit in the inside of a card base. You can add any of those elements to the top and cut it out, or you can leave that spot um, full. That way you could um, write a sentiment there. As for this honeybee die, this is like, it works like an embossing folder, except it's not a folder. So it's quilted and I thought that went so well with the embroidered look. Um, I love anything that looks tufted. Oh, love it. Um, one of my chairs is tufted. Um, when I redo, when we finally redo our guest bedroom, I want to get a tufted headboard for in there. So pretty. So this is the um, embroidered, excuse me, embroidery um, frame and the hoop. And then I'm using the wreath from the wreath floral die. Um, I'm using the largest one to cut it and I'm cutting it out of white. I'm gonna end up cutting that down in half so it doesn't really matter what color it is because it's gonna be hidden behind all of the flowers. So I use a Gemini cutting machine and mine can cut through two pieces of paper. So you'll have to decide what your die cutting machine can handle. For everything else, I'm using these Sizzix sheets. If you've followed me on my other ch on my channel, you've heard me rave about these sheets like for years. These are basically double side of adhesive sheets and you can put them on the back of cardstock and that means you don't have to use any adhesive like liquid adhesive, you know, tape, anything like that. It's already on the back for you. And um, again, these are in the Scrapbook Pal store and I will have them um, linked down below. So I wanted to bring in a couple more colors and this is where I decided that I wanted to go pastel and I decided I wanted this beautiful peach as my card base. So you're gonna see me um, cut this down to four and a quarter by 11. I have scored it at five and a half. And then I'm gonna bring in the tufted piece. So this is actually four and a quarter by five and a half, but I cut it down to four by five and a quarter by taking an eighth of, the, eighth of an inch off each, each side so it would be even. For the gift card holder, you wanna make sure that you don't put any glue behind the tabs. That way you can slide your gift card in or your rewards card if you don't have a <laughs> an empty gift card hanging around the house. And then here you see me bring in some glue dots to go behind the tabs because I wasn't sure how far I could take the adhesive in. And again, you can't glue down those tabs because that is where the gift card sets. So I am bringing in just a random circle die from my collection. You can kind of see it, but I've um, um, typed, no, I've written number one, and then I'm writing out mom. This is very rudimentary, <laughs> I did my best. Um, I really like how it turned out. You'll see later that my O gets a little, 
a, a little squoval, like part squares, part oval, but it turned out fine. So for the word mom, I'm using a lilac or lavender colored embroidery thread. And then later I use a light green for the number one. So I'm going to slow this down so I can kind of show you how it works. Again, I haven't like I haven't embroidered in like 25 years. So <laughs> I did my best. So you, um, I'm using my needle first to poke holes from the front. That way they're a little bit bigger and I can see them from the back. So I'm going to show you how to do the M and then I'm going to go on and do the rest by my, um, off camera. So you want to make sure that you knot your thread at the end. And again, this is how I do it. This is how my grandmother taught me to do it. If you've learned a different way, that's cool. So you start at the back and then you go through the front and you go to the next hole. Then you go back through the back and then you go to the next hole. You try to go through the next hole. My hands were really shaky doing this, so it was a little bit of a struggle, but I really had, I mean, it's been years, years and years and years. So you go through the back, you go through the front, and then you go through the past hole. And again, this is how I was taught. Um, there's a whole flossing community, floss community called Floss Tube, where people basically share them cross-stitching or embroidering. So if you want to see how a professional does it, I suggest that video. But since this is just a card, you know, I'm not making a huge picture or whatever, um, this worked out for me. I will tell you that it's been a long time since I've had to thread a needle. <laughs> the last time I saw my optometrist, she's like, I think you're going to need bifocals the next time I see you. And I think she was right. Oh, goodness. Okay, so once I have that done, here I was like, okay, I don't think yellow is going to show up. The peach was too light to show up. So I brought in kind of a light green, kind of a pistachio color, if you will. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the number one that I did for the mom. I started with the hashtag and just went back through it. And you can see here that I just used some washi tape on the back to adhere it. And then I'm gonna pop this up because of all the thread on the back, it won't adhere flat. So I am using a ton of, um, pop-up squares, whatever you want to call them, foam squares, um, just because I don't want this to move. I don't even want it to think about <laughs> moving. So I've put about probably 15 on the back. You don't have to use nearly that much, or if you have um, like adhesive um, strips, that would probably be a little bit easier. Since I had here, um, excuse me, popped up the hoop, I've got to pop up the frame too. So what I've done is I've cut these squares into thirds and that uh, makes them just wide enough to go behind this really thin frame. So really, really pretty. If you were someone who didn't want to like do the actual embroidery, you could totally cut out the letters and just glue the letters on if you wanted to. That would totally work. So this is why I love the adhesive sheets. You just peel off the backer paper and then you can just adhere it to whatever you want. So this is the wreath and I just ended up cutting it in half because I didn't want this to go around the entirety of the embroidered hoop. I just wanted it to be kind of at the bottom um, framing it. So I'm just adding these here and there. Um, you can let your inner florist out to play. <laughs> it doesn't have to be any particular way. It can, you know, however you want it to be. You can use different colors. Um, on the actual packaging, they used a more kind of rustic um, browns and khaki and reds, kind of more like a traditional kind of rustic Christmas theme. You could absolutely do that as well. Um, and there's a couple of other... Did I use all of them? Maybe I did end up using all of them. I was like, I think there's one more um, berry vine, but I, I, I do believe I ended up using all of them. So before I started using the adhesive sheets on everything, um, I, I, I just had to adhere these with um, either glue dots or some Tombow Mono liquid glue. 
So once I got it just about where I wanted it, I um, used the adhesive on the back of these um, sticky vines, etc., to go ahead and get this adhered. Um, and then I moved the leaves around to make sure it wasn't covering the letters. And again, I used some glue dots. I used some Tombow Mono Liquid Glue. I come in um, for those that these is that excuse me those that are sticking up um, higher, and I add some of the foam squares. There are three different parts to the flowers that you can cut out, and I just adhere them together. Um, just alternating the colors. I've done three kind of layered flowers and then I'm going to put on two smaller flowers. I like to do things in odds. So three, one, three, five, seven, you, you get what I mean. So this will give me um, three large flowers but a total of five, five flowers. Tim Holtz craft pick saves the day on a lot of things, let me tell you. <laughs> so here I'm peeling off some more of that backing film again, backer from the um, adhesive sheets and I'm just hearing them flat. So once I get all of that done, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in um, some jewels from Honeybee Stamps. And I'm just gonna add these little rhinestones to the center of the flowers. I'm just kind of alternating the colors. You get a ton on this sheet. Um, they are all the same size, which I absolutely love. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna bring in, this is the Sea Breeze Jewel Drops from Nuvo. These um, dry clear. Glossy accents would also work, but I'm using these on that um, kind of periwinkle, fine to just give it a little bit more oomph. So this is it. This is the finished card. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you. You can see there how my O got a little away from me, but that's okay. I really appreciate you. Don't forget to subscribe and come back for more crafty goodness. And again, all the supplies will be linked down below. Thanks so, for, thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.